But, uh, you know, before any of that, let's talk about our games and our players of the week. This week was no exception. We had some really crazy stuff go on. And I think let's start with our game of the week. The first up being the Division Two game of the week here. And I, I'll say this always. There were great nominations, great selections across the board. This one for me took the cake. Wingate 34-30 over in-state rival Lenore Ryan in a big-time sack matchup. Lenore Ryan, previously number seven in the country. Wingate unranked. You see that clip, the first clip right there that played was the borderline last-second touchdown from Wingate that ended up sealing the deal. A couple other great clips here um, from the Bulldogs' victory. And... What a timely win for a Wingate team that uh, last year opened a lot of people's eyes when they snuck into the playoffs and made it probably to the quarterfinals. Here's a touchdown right here with about 30 seconds to go. You see him break this one off and stun the Bears. What a game from Wingate. And, you know, some other great nominations. We're going to talk about these games later. The Colorado Mines win. You talk about that Valdosta State upset of West Florida. Wayne State uh, College over Augustana. A lot of big-time D2 games on the slate this weekend. This one stuck out to me. That was our selection for Game of the Week. On the D3 side of things, this, on the other hand, was actually a freaking layup. John Hopkins uh, over at Mullenberg in a top 25 matchup. They're calling this the Miracle at Mullenberg. The kick, you need to rewatch this clip. They're going for a kick here right towards the end of the game. There's like three seconds left, tied at 28. And you'll see he kicks it incredibly low, but it's into the hands of one of his own players. Turns around, runs that thing in for a touchdown. So if you're reading the box score, all you see is a blocked field goal return for touchdown for the win. You think, oh, well, Mullenberg must have been kicking the ball. You'd be wrong. I was wrong. So is every other sane person who follows the sport. That's one of the craziest endings I've seen in any level of football in my 22 years of life. Shout out to Johns Hopkins. They're 8-0. 8-0, 9-0, I don't care. They haven't lost. All right, they're looking like they're going to be the one seed. Still have a couple games to finish out here, but they are absolutely rolling right now, the Jays over there. Finally, though, NAIA side of things, another layup. This one, top three teams here. Number one, Northwestern taking on number three, Morningside. They go into the fourth quarter, tied 20 apiece. Northwestern comes out 14 owes them. They drop a goose egg in the fourth, and you can see the conditions. Pretty crazy. We'll talk about this game a little bit more in depth later, man. But it was a blow, uh, blow storm. It was a snowstorm over there uh, in Iowa. The Red Raiders from Northwestern coming out on top of that one. They retained their number one spot. Morningside played a quality game in some tough conditions. But uh, Northwestern is very much still that team. Otherwise, though, we can go ahead and, and bring up, uh, you know, right before we get into everything else, let's talk some players of the week. <laughs> 